Dearly beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank God for this time. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you for the opportunities that you give us to share with your word. And we pray that, Father, you will continue being our help, you will continue being our teacher and guide by the power of your Holy Spirit. And this session, Lord, we pray that you speak to us and speak energizing words and so that we continue, shall continue in the ministry in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with our series, Finding God. And finding God is something that is so nice that when you find him, there is joy in your heart. When you find him, there is, you know, there is gratitude. When you find him, there is security that you acquire, that you get. And so we continue thanking God for what he does in our lives. He is our father who never leaves his children. He's the father that keeps caring for his children. And so we continue with the ministry that the Lord Jesus Christ was doing here on earth. And this ministry was the one that he did, singling out people that he would delegate later on after he had left to go back to heaven. And we have been talking about the life of the disciples all through. And the, the 12, we have been reading their names over and over. And we have seen in the inner circle, the three that he taught. But anyway, the whole thing is that he was preparing them for ministry. And so this time, I have just come with a statement that Jesus makes. Remember, Jesus spent three years here on earth of active ministry in the physical body. Choosing those people, he chose them to delegate them to continue after he goes back to heaven, which he did. And But before he went, in John chapter 14, Jesus knew that these people would be devastated, that these people would be overcome by worry, that these people would be overcome by anxiety because he had been with them. He's the one who called them. He graduated them. I mean, he taught them first and then he graduated them to go and preach. But as a master, their hearts would be troubled. And so in John chapter 14, he tells them, your hearts should not be troubled, but trust in God, believe in God, and believe also in me. And so he was telling them, you'll continue with the ministry, but your hearts should not be troubled. And so the statement that I give here today is in John chapter 14, verse 18. When Jesus had told them about his going away, but let us begin from chapter 14, verse 15. He tells them that if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will give, I will pray the Father. And he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he dwells with you and will be within you. Hallelujah to that. Now verse 18 is the one that I give you, which is actually the theme of our talk, of our sharing now, that I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Now the issue is not as orphans. Jesus was telling them, I will not leave you as orphans. And as he told them, he tells it to us. Not as orphans. Now, I took time to think about the life of an orphan. An orphan, first of all, is someone that has lost the parents. And in most cases in African culture here, you lose a father, you become an orphan. An orphan is someone who is without a parent. And therefore, because a parent is the one that takes care of you, that handles your affairs, when the parent departs, other people may come in and disorganize the home. So an orphan is someone that can be marginalized. The troubles of an orphan looked down upon. The troubles of an orphan, one who has nobody to take care of them, the troubles of an orphan, an orphan can suffer. Now Jesus looked at them, he said, no, 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 no. I'm not leaving you as orphans. 
He was telling them in their hearing, remember there were 12, and at one time there were 72, at another moment there were, you know, there were so many. And after Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, the number grew and grew and grew up to where we are today. And the statement that Jesus makes here is, I will not leave you as orphans. Now, not list the people, not demoralize the people, not worry the people, not oppress the people, not these are the orphans. And of course, actually, everybody will come wanting to grab what the orphan is left with. You've seen land taken, the, the property that the parent has left, people jump in. And, but we are saying, our God, through his son Jesus Christ, has not left us as orphans. Now, earlier, the Bible does mention very many things about the life of an orphan. And we see that the Bible, God is concerned about people who get mistreated along the way. Now, God talks about those that are fatherless. And a fatherless person, the one that we're talking about as an orphan. And in the book of the letter of James, chapter 1, verse 27, the Bible is very, very clear about that. It talks about the true religion that God accepts as pure and faultless. And he is concerned about the fatherless person. And so he says, look after the orphans. Can you imagine? Look after the widows in their distress and keep oneself from being polluted by the world. So the pure religion, God is concerned about those the people that are fatherless. And so he tells through this servant, James, and remember the James, one of the three who was the inner circle. Remember the Peter, James, and John. Now this is the James they were talking about. Now he writes in his letter and says, the true religion that God accepts and is as he takes as pure and faultless is look after the orphans and the widows. And so God is concerned that he cares about those that are fatherless. And so the reason why we come with the message, not as orphans. And in the, book, the same book of James, chapter 2, verse 15 and 16, the Bible said, does mention that the same James says, suppose a brother or sister is without clothes or daily food. And then you go ahead and say, God, my, my brother, go in peace. Wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but you do nothing about it, about his physical needs. What does it mean? What good is it? So God is concerned about the people that are fatherless. That's why he says, don't just say, keep warm, my brother. Be blessed, my brother. Keep, you know, keep safe, my brother. Keep well fed. Now, this is where we are encouraged to be our brother's keeper. That when someone is found in this kind of life, God is concerned that actually we're not as orphans, and therefore he calls us, calls upon us, those that have a big heart, a heart like God is a heart, and remember God created us in his own image. I have said this before, I say it again. In Latini, the image of God is imago Dei, that we are God's image, that he created you. And so if God cares about other people that are fatherless, that are widows. Now we are called upon as church to be concerned about the people that are found in such situations. And so James in chapter two, verse 15 and 16 says, suppose a brother or sister, and he says a brother or sister who is, you know, who, who doesn't have what he needs. And so it is important that we remember this, that I am not an orphan in the presence of the Lord God. And he takes good care of you. He takes good care of me. And therefore, we need just to be closer. Remember, at one point, I said, be a disciple friend of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even, even when you are an orphan, don't misbehave. Draw closer to someone who is taking care of you. So when, that not as orphans, but orphans that will draw closer to their caregiver. And our caregiver here is our God. And then another portion of scripture is in the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 17. This is when... God himself speaks through this prophet in the Old Testament times and says, learn to do right. Seek justice. Encourage the oppressed. Defend the, defend, the, defend the poor. Defend the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widows. And so lead, he says, learn to do good. And so we want to encourage ourselves, friends, as church, as pastors, 
as brothers and sisters, Jesus tells the disciples that I will not leave you as orphans. By the way, interpret it further because he had established the church. Now someone who needs his company, the reason why we have fellowships, now fellowship, fellowship brothers and sisters, you have to give peace, to have encouragement, to give advice, to keep, you know, standing with the person that has a problem. And so in the first place, he says, I will not leave you as orphans because he sent the Holy Spirit who came to be our teacher. And we shall continue thinking about these things because as time con con continues, we shall be talking about the roles of the Holy Spirit in time to come. But here, he says he will come. That's one. Number two, he had left a church, established a church, a church where there is fellowship, a church where there is encouragement, a, a church where there is joy, you know, visiting one another, speaking the same, singing hymns, songs. So this is what we are saying. You know, the church must stop and get there and say, yes, not as orphans. We have a fellowship. We have the brothers and sisters. And now here in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17, he says, learn to do right, seek justice, encourage the oppressed, defend the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. And so there are people who are vulnerable in our society, in our community. You've heard of our radios, TVs, people that come grab the land, the pieces of land, the breaking out down the houses, the poor people, the oppressed. Our generation is really against those that are poor. But we want to claim our right full position before God that nobody will tamper with our inheritance. Can we say amen? Nobody can tamper with our inheritance because not as orphans, he cares about us. Now we continue in Hosea chapter 14 verse 3. Hosea chapter 14 verse 3, the Bible says, For in you the fatherless find compassion. In our God, those who are fatherless find compassion. And indeed, he says so. We find our joy. We find our peace. We find our, you know, we find our inheritance in there. And so, friends, the Bible is very, very clear about the life of the person that, um, that, that is fatherless, the life of a person that is having nobody to take care of them. And this is the point that we're making here. When Jesus says that I will not leave you as, as fatherless, as orphans, this is exactly what he's saying, that um, he is our father and he is our Lord, for in you the fatherless find compassion, and indeed we find compassion in our Lord God, who is our father and, 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 and Lord. And so friends, not as orphans, not as orphans, and we have read about it this in the book of Psalms, in the book of Deuteronomy, God defends the cause of the weak and the fatherless, maintaining the rights of the poor and the oppressed. Now, are you oppressed in any way? Are you devastated in any way? God will defend your cause. God will stand with you. God will, play, will bless you. The reason why in John chapter 14, verse 18, the Bible says, I will not leave you as orphans. He promises to come back to us. He promises to stand with us. Now, my friends, my brothers and sisters, let us keep our hopes high. Now, this, Jesus mentioned these words to the apostles, to the disciples, I will not leave you as orphans, and you are that person that God has positioned in this generation, in this situation, to do the work of encouraging one another. You may be the very orphan, you may be the very orphan, but an orphan to an orphan, encouragement, that's fellowship. Now, God takes special notice of those that are in agony. God takes special notice of those that are, you know, that are stressful. God takes special notice of those that are finding life agonizing. He doesn't overlook our cries. He doesn't overlook our stresses. He doesn't overlook our situations. He hears. And in the book of Exodus, chapters 23, when he came down, he says, uh, he looked at the children of Israel in Egypt, crying, you know, uh, because of the slave masters. 
You know, there were people that were oppressed a lot. Look at it, Exodus chapter 3. And then he does mention great things there. And he, he looks at their agonies. He looks at their troubles. He looks at their stresses. He looks at the same masters. He looks at those that were doing all those things. And then he makes pronouncements that actually uh, are our, you know, you know, our foundation that we should not lose heart. And so he had the, the groanings of the people of Israel. And so the reason why he called Moses to send him to them and says, listen, God has heard your cries. And therefore he says, I come down to save you. And this is what he tells us. He encourages us. He encourages you. He is still in the business of encouraging us. He's still in the business of saving us. That even when the slave masters are there, even when the situations are so agonizing, even when the times are so bad, even when the times are so troublesome, like he told the disciples in John chapter 14 that let your hearts not be troubled, he still tells you and me. Even when he was in heaven and he saw the Israelites in Egypt, the Hebrews, crying, groaning because of the slave masters, as we see it in Exodus chapter 2 and 3, and he sends Moses, he tells, he gives Moses that I have heard, I have seen, and therefore I have come down to save them. And so I still believe that we are not as orphans. There are situations that are happening in the world. You hear Christians being devastated. You hear Christians being mistreated. You hear Christians being handled in this and that. You hear Christians, their land being grabbed here and there. Mistreatments here and there, but not as orphans. And this is something that the Lord God had the groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And therefore, he looked upon his children and came down and served them. Now, this is something that I want to encourage upon my brother, that God, who does not live as orphans, he reaches out, he comes down and reaches out and heals and carries us through. And therefore, I pray for you that God will carry you through. God will take you through. He spoke these words to the apostles, to the disciples, that I will not leave you as orphans, I will come back to you. And so, as he told them, he tells us, and remember, we have been looking at the lives of the apostles, of the disciples, over time. And now, this time around, we are saying, we are not as orphans, and so take your position as a son. Take your position as a daughter in the house of the Lord. And it is at the same time that I want to encourage fellowships. You who go to fellowships, be an encouragement to one another. And that's another way of not being isolated, of not being as orphans. And if you are there, belong to a fellowship. Belong. Belong to a fellowship. And so that you will grow together. And so that you will be encouraged together. And so that you will be fed together. And so that you will be blessed together. And so that you will be standing together. And the church of Christ needs to continue even when the times are so hard. And may God bless us because we are not as orphans, but he remains our father. That actually there should be someone who will defend the cause of the fatherless. And in our generation, he's calling upon women and men that are able to spearhead this. And it could be you, it could be me. And so that we stand together. And as we wait upon God's power to reign in our lives, may he continue speaking to you. Don't lose heart. He is there for us, not as orphans. He fights for our cause and will continue standing with you. And the liberation at a time T, he will come. And so, as he says, there's time for everything. There's time to cry, but also there's time to laugh. And who knows what time that will be, but it's God who knows. So stay faithful up to the end. He will give you the crown of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.